Okay, so with the engine, uh, with a boat that's been laid up for a couple of years, uh, the last thing you want to be thinking about doing is putting the boat straight in the water and going and using it. So you've got to be really religious with the fuel management, so empty the fuel tank, flush it, change the fuel lines, uh, fuel filters, and turn it over and actually see the engine running ashore with a water feed from here, rather than just pop it in the water and hope. Okay. Oh dear, uh, with the electrics we've, we've got basically a twin battery installation here. Uh, as you can see the batteries haven't been secured at all. Not clever. This one has been detached. So I'm just going to see how much charge is in them. I don't think there's any charge in either of them because I haven't been able to get any of the systems to work. Here's my yes, it is. Yes, we've had lots of water coming in through here. You can see the state of all this at the back here. Even the, even the ply was rotten. Just what happens. All this is rotten here, look. A lot of framing for this. Oh. I think you can safely say it's rotten when you can push your finger through it. Obviously, we're not connected to shore power, but it's not very clever when you've got water running over the top of your shore power electrics like here. And really, again, it should be flexible, cable rather than uh, solid copper uh, wiring. And I don't really like the idea of a metal back backing box uh, with the vibrations going on with that lot. So anyway, we'll have a little look at the batteries first. Uh, the corrosion water running over the engine here, the water running over is creating corrosion on things like this. And the engine frames and mounts, you know, it all needs cleaning up. Less than two in that one, and we've got eight in this one, which is why we can't get anything to work. So from a point of view of survey, it's always worth making sure that uh, at pre-purchase, you make sure the owner's aware that the batteries need to be charged up so the surveyor can test all the electrics, at least switch test everything, make sure they work. Whereas currently we're going in completely blind on this, we have no idea about what works and what doesn't work on the electrics of the boat. And obviously we can see all this water ingress over the top here. Uh, um, you know, it's really not helpful. All right. Through the engine. Okay, so this is an in. This engine is an indirectly called uh, Volvo. Um, it's actually a, a Perkins base engine. I think it was the old Perkins Piranha three-cylinder. Uh, the, the biggest problem here you've got is the fact with the lack of use and being stood here for some time. Can you see how much corrosion is on things like the flywheel on the on the pulley wheel here? Um, so the first time this has started, that's just going to shred this belt very quickly. So you lose your alternator and your internal water pump. It's an internally cooled engine. So you've got at the top here oh, a radiator cap. Nice and quite dark green uh, coolant water in there. So the antifreeze is fairly tidy. So that's a reasonable strength. With antifreeze, it's really important to change them every two or three years because the inhibitors we're now using in with the environmentally friendly stuff will corrode and become an aggressor after uh, after two or three years. Um, your water cooling on this particular engine comes through a hose from the sail drive. The seacock is almost impossible to reach. It's down in this side of the engine on the, on the port side of the engine. Uh, it's run underneath the engine comes up to this strainer which is in a reasonably nice place to look at and then it's returned to the water pump and from the water pump it goes up to an anti-siphon which is at the back there that stops uh, basically any water hydraulicing of the engine when it's left or when you're sailing and it's not being run and then it comes into the heat exchanger end here now the caps are always notoriously uh, good at corroding off and then it, you've got the water discharge then out through the manifold at the back here and again the manifolds are quite common for corroding uh, from the exhaust manifold you've got a piece of exhaust hose which is absolutely impossible to see and then you've got a little uh, plastic silencer there with a couple of clamps on. Uh, none of that looks actually secure so it's just waving around in the wind. Uh, really it should be secure and then the hose from there is run up through the exhaust uh, and out through the, uh, through the transom and it's got a swan neck uh, before it's discharged so that's not too bad. The um, diesel system uh, is copper. Uh, you've got a filter here which again is relatively easy to, to see. 
not the most easiest to try and change. Um, from when it goes from into the filter, it comes out the other side. It's in it's in uh, an ISO marked hose, and then that goes up to the, the lift pump, uh, which is here somewhere. And then from the lift pump, sometimes a little manual on them that you can help prime them comes up into a uh, the, the main filter for the engine, fuel filter for the engine, and then from there it goes into the injector bank, which is here, and then into the injectors uh, on this engine got three. This is always useful to know because one of the beautiful things about Volvo in this particular case is they've used the ba Perkins base engine and it's always worth getting that information because anywhere in the world if you're if you need spares for Perkins it's the same engine uh, and then the Volvo Penta serial number is there underneath the, uh, the fuel pump Looks, they always start with that 510 but it's this last set of digits here somewhere you need not very easy read, they're just stamped in. Get some photographs of that. Oil filters and actually easy one to reach. But again the side boxing really wants to come off to actually get to it simply easily. And there we are. Uh, engine mounts generally should be changed at the same time as when you do your, your donut on your sail drive. If you haven't got a sail drive and you're a normal shaft, then obviously look at these from a point of view of every uh, 10 years. As you can see, there's a lot of corrosion on this uh, support bracket, so there's been quite a bit of thinning on there. Always look for the, uh, the fastings and the bolts. I quite regularly find that a few bolts come loose. That's when you can turn them with your hand, you know you've got a problem. <laughs> That's not too bad. hear that turning at me. Well, at least we know after two and a half years it hasn't seized which is a good sign. All right